Hi guys, this is Ada Ojai from MPPA Learning TV. This video features a basic overview of concepts on atrial fibrillation plus key concepts for success on MP boards. Thank you. In this video, I will talk about the following general principles, presentation, diagnosis, treatment, management, specialized interventions, and I will also go over a case question. Atrial fibrillation is considered the most common sustained arrhythmia. It is more prevalent in advanced age population, possibly because of age and heart. The etiological factors for atrial fibrillation include genetics, cardiovascular disease, endocrine disorders, sedentary lifestyle, high blood pressure, tobacco abuse, alcoholism, caffeine use, hypothyroidism, electrolyte imbalance, and other disease process that influence the automacity of the heart, such as COPD and PE. The list is exhaustive. Presentation. Pulmonary vein foci is the main culprit. Pulmonary vein vasculature is comprised of ectopic pacemaker tissue. Ectopic me just means outside essay notes. Abnormal conduction or rapid firing of electrical impulses within the PV myocardium leads to an irregular feedback loop to the AV node and in turn causes disorganized rhythmic activities in the atrium and ventricles. This phenomena leads to atrial fibrillation. Symptomatology of Atrial fibrillation is mainly asymptomatic, but can be symptomatic. Symptoms are mediated by loss of atrial kick and rapidity of ventricular contraction. Patients presenting with AFib are typically asymptomatic, but can be symptomatic. When symptomatic, observe symptoms such as palpitation, dyspnea, chest discomfort, dizziness, presyncope, and syncope. With rapid rate, patients are typically breathless with hemodynamic instability requiring emergency referral. Diagnosis. ECG will show an irregular rhythm without P waves and also an irregular QRS. Other investigations listed will help to evaluate for structural dysfunction, presence of thrombosis in the atrial compartments, and also help to exclude secondary causes or underlying disease process. Classification helps to guide treatment approach. Treatment of atrial fibrillation. Best initial treatment for atrial fibrillation in a stable patient is beta blocker or non-dehydropyridine calcium channel blockers such as cardiazem and verapamil. The goal of pharmacotherapy is mainly to maintain, to control ventricular rate, anticoagulate, and restore sinus rhythm if inclusion criteria is met. Beta blockers and non-dye calcium channel blockers work to inhibit impulses from the atria to ventricles. Digoxin can be beneficial to elderly patients and patients with concurrent CHF. Amiodarone, flaconide, and propafenone require specialist referral and inpatient monitoring. For, char for CHAD 
two score greater or equal to two, it's important to utilize appropriate, appropriate inclusion criteria to anticoagulate. Warfarin and novel anticoagulants are recommended. Selection of anticoagulant is guided by the classification of AFib. Baseline renal function should be obtained. Novel anticoagulants such as dabigotran dab, dab and apixaban are recommended for non-valvular AFib and increase susceptibility to intracranial bleed. CHAD to VAS calculator for atrial fibrillation. This scoring method helps to obviate the incidence of stroke and tailor anticoagulant therapy. Make sure to review this scoring tool because it is a very important clinical tool for managing patients with atrial fibrillation. Caveats with management. Unstable patients or patients with hemodynamic symptoms must be transferred to the emergency department. Hemodynamic symptoms include rapid heart rate, especially heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute, hypotension, rails, angina, and so forth. Avoid non-dye calcium channel blockers in AFib patients with comorbid systolic heart failure. Start rate control agents at a low dose, then titrate upward per tolerability. Ther the therapeutic window for INR is two to three. Target organ for AFib is the brain. It is considered a major precursor of stroke because pulling of the blood in the atria leads to embolization to the brain. Specialized intervention in atrial fibrillation management. Specialist referral is necessary for optimized treatment. Considerations for, for DC cardioversion, ablation, structural disease, and so forth. Case question. Here is our case question, yay. I want you to imagine yourself taking care of this patient. Her name is Mrs. Vaughn, and she is well known to your clinic. Just consider her one of your patients for today. I want you to immerse yourself into this case study and imagine yourself managing Mrs. Vaughn. So let's go ahead with the questions. Mrs. Vaughn is a 75-year-old female who presented to your clinic for annual physical. Her past medical history include hypertension and hypothyroidism. She stated, I feel fine, except being stuck in the house because of the pandemic. And I, I know we all feel stuck a little bit. <laughs> Upon further evaluation, ROS was unremarkable. However, ECG shows fibrillatory waves, no discernible P waves, irregular QRS with a ventricular rate of 88 beats per minute. Which of the following is the best initial pharmacotherapy? A is mechanical cardioversion, B is digoxin, C is beta blocker, or non dye C calcium channel blocker. D is class 3 antiarrhythmic. Case question analysis. So let's break this down. What do you think is going on with Mrs. Vaughn? What do you suspect is the likely diagnosis? This is what we need to do first. Let's read through the questions carefully. And the important, the concepts we need, we need to take note of as we read the questions is the demographic, such as elderly, side of care, chief complaint. So Mrs. Vaughn is a 75-year-old female. 
so I'll take a note of that, who presented to your clinic for annual physical. So she has no complaint she's presenting for annual physical. The next thing is the patient Patient comes in for a physical, so no unusual complaint. So patient is asymptomatic. That's another thing I'm noting. Past medical history is high blood pressure and hypothyroidism. Um, it being being that the patient is well known to the clinic, I, it's suffice to say that her condition, her chronic condition, is well controlled. Another another thing that uh, is an important clue is. When she stated that she feels fine, she doesn't have any complaints, that she's just concerned about being stuck in the house because of the pandemic. So upon further evaluation, uh, RS was unremarkable. However, uh, her EKG showed some abnormality. So the EKG showed uh, fibrillation. So coarse frizzles on the EKG. And another important thing to note was that there was no P waves. So using active recall or critical thinking or just a walking a, a walk knowledge of what you know to be AFib, the first thing that comes to my mind is absence of, absence of P waves with fuzzy waves on the ECG equals AFib. So without even um, kind of thinking it through, I already know like AFib, no P waves. So I just know that. And it's just fuzzy on the EKG. So now that we know that the most likely diagnosis is AFib, what is the best initial therapy? So we can reword it by saying, what is the first treatment? What do you do first when you notice that somebody has AFib? So, I mean, of course it's important to get other important diagnostics, but the question is very specific. It's just asking for the pharmacotherapy. So one thing that's important for you as a student, especially when you're taking board exams, is to take careful note of the STEM questions. Another uh, tip that I have is spend about one minute or one minute and two seconds to kind of read over the questions because you're on a time limit. So f what I understand from this question, what is the best initial therapy? So best initial therapy just means what is the first treatment? What is the first line treatment? What do the evidence-based tax force recommend as the first line treatment? So this is what I'll do. I will strike I will strike out A because it is procedural and it's not a medication. I will also strike out B and C because it requires a compelling indicator or like any all it requires that maybe the patient has a comorbid condition and I have to take considerations for that. So being that I personally know that the first line for AFib is beta blocker, I can actually answer the question without looking at the answer choice because I already know this. So I don't know if this makes it easy to kind of go through questions, but I think one, uh, one thing that's important is reading the questions thoroughly, carefully, noting demographics, noting uh, chief complaints, noting risk factors, noting uh, past medical history. Um, we, from, the, uh, from the presentation, we know that most of the patients that present with AFib are gonna be asymptomatic. So it's probably gonna be like an incidental finding when they come in for a physical. So um, that kind of helps you to work through the question and, and then you can arrive at the best answer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you much. And please subscribe to our channel.